Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're joining me again. My name is Sasha Reed. Today I've got a fun a little tutorial that I pretty much did um, last Saturday for my Saturday Night Crafting in and amongst a whole bunch of other um, little tips and techniques and things. Um, but I had one of these moments where when I was done filming, um, it was really late. It was um, about 12 o'clock at night when I finished and got my video uploaded. Uh, so I had a shower at about 1 o'clock in the morning. And while I was in the shower, I had this aha moment. I don't know if you like that where you craft, you do something, and then you realize that was probably one of the stupidest ways to have done it. So I had one of those moments where the technique I'm going to share with you um, is a revamped version of the one from last Saturday and I apologize if you have struggled through it and done that technique. I'm going to share a way which makes it a million times easier. So the basis for this video is to use up your scraps and to make the most of those leftover bits. If you've done a background um, like these ones here which I'll link these videos down below Last week I did a whole bunch of really fun, awesome backgrounds. You can check that video out and see how I did those if you want to. I also did a whole bunch of cards with all the pieces that I created and then did a few using the scraps. I still have loads of the scraps left over. So I don't know if you're like me, but I just can't bear myself to chuck any of them away. A lot of them you'll see in my video if you watch it or have watched it how I have a lot of the same size scraps. Um, so I keep them all in a little jar on my desk. So this is my main um, little scraps, my strips I should say. Um, it's my strips jar, it's just a peanut butter jar and I've got loads of scraps in here. I've got, I keep them all, <laughs> which I used to chuck them but actually I don't end up having a ton. Like this is probably all my strips from quite a few months worth of crafting uh, and I use them all the time. So I wanted to share with you how you can get through using up some of your scraps. They do need to be sort of light patterns or quite simple patterns, not intricate in your face patterns. I think it'll be really too much on the eyes if you use um, something that's got a lot of pattern to it. Um, or using up any of the backgrounds that you've made. So if you've got any of your off cuts or bits that you've not used, keep those and save those. Um, in my last videos, I shared with you how you can make a whole bunch of these little metallic strips um, and they're all sticky backed. So they've all got double sided adhesive already on them, ready to go. And these are great for using as accents. In my other, my jar, I've also got some of these strips left over from my crazy fun backgrounds and I've got those in there ready to use up. So I thought this Saturday would be a really fun time together. It's going to be a quick short video I hope. Um, I do babble a bit sometimes and I apologize but it's Saturday night we're having a great time together aren't we? I've got a ton of samples to share with you. I've done about 20 cards in only a few hours so this is quick and easy. Right so getting started I'm going to use a stamp platform. I've got my Tim Holtz tonic one. I really like this one. It's magnetic. Um, it's strong. It's got a really hard thick plastic top so when I push down on it it doesn't bend ever. It's really solid acrylic. Um, so that's what I'm using today. I've got some of this tape down here. This tape is just post-it note tape or low tack tape and I really like having it on my board because I like having my card central. Sometimes I find if I tuck my card in this corner that I can't get a clear image. So if I were to put my card right in the corner and I want to stamp nice and close to this edge, if my stamp is shorter or thinner than this edge here, I sometimes find I cannot get a clear image right close to the edge. So I kind of just bumped my edge inward a bit and then that way I can always stamp off my card if I want to so I can have an image that kind of comes all the way around um, because I'm not tucking it up in the corner or I can have an image nice and close to the edge and I'm not going to have to worry about it not stamping because of this edge. So that's why I've got this silly looking paper here. It just kind of keeps my card in the centre. I'm going to replace it soon because it's starting to peel off. So you're going to position your card in your stamp platform however you prefer it. <laughs> Um, and then I'm just going to stick my magnets on. Now I'm making sure it's right up against those two edges. You're going to take an image, a stamp image, or maybe you have multiple images, whatever you want to stamp with. So get that out, position it where you want it to go on your card. 
make sure your card is nice and tucked in to those sides, as I was saying, because we're going to re-stamp this and we want it to be in the same position. So we've got that down. If your stamp sticks to your card and lifts up, just make sure you reposition it and get it right in the right spot. Then you're going to need a black ink. I like the Versafine black ink. It's really dark. It's the best black ink I've ever used in my life. I've tried Memento. I've tried Stampin' Up. I've tried... Gina K. Um, I've tried so many different kinds and this is my favorite black. It is black, black, black and I love it. It is a pigment ink so it takes a little while longer to dry. So if you're going to do this in bulk, I would suggest stamping all your images, setting them aside to dry and then coming back and doing the next step because otherwise you might end up smearing your ink. So I'm just going to double stamp it because sometimes you don't get the right pressure and you can see I've got little bits of blotchy and I want a nice dark clear black image which is one thing that is really nice about using a stamping platform. Okay so I've got a nice image there. Okay so when you've got that done you're going to set it aside to just dry a little bit if you've used a pigment ink. Now don't alter your stamp on your platform. Leave it exactly where it is. What I like to do is take a bit of scrap paper and I just stick it inside there and just close it. And then that way it doesn't get my stamp platform inky. Because what I'll do inevitably is stick my card back in without having wiped my surface. And then I get that nice image on the back of my card. And this is going on straight onto a card. You could do it onto a panel if you feel like. Whatever you want to do. So next step, we're going to come in with our scraps. We're going to glue some scraps onto our card and make use of those. There are various ways you can do this. I'll share a whole bunch of samples at the end of the tutorial in which you can see all the different ways, shapes, directions you can use your scraps. So for basic purposes, we're just going to start by gluing them down. I'm going to take a really strong adhesive because this is quite thick cardstock. I'm not going to measure um, because we can just trim it off when we're done. I'm going to keep it nice and simple and easy. You can do whatever you like, use whatever scraps you've got. I've used big chunks, skinny chunks, um, thin ones, long ones, whatever you've got lying around, use them up. So I'm going to put a bit of adhesive on there and line up wherever I want my card strip to go. I'm going to leave a little border on the edge there and just stick that straight down. Now be mindful if you are putting lots of glue on and not going for an exact strip measurement. Make sure that you've got a surface you can wipe off afterwards because you will get some glue on there if you've done what I've done and just gone a little bit extra messy. Um, this is a really nice, simple, fast um, project you can do in tutorial. So next, sticking on the glue and sticking this one down. I hope you're all having a great time, by the way. I feel like it's been ages since I've done a video. I'm trying to make sure that um, I'm getting lots of work in on the weekends because the weekdays I am busy with the kids. My husband's got to work as a university, um, le well, he's a head of department for a university. So he's busy in meetings Monday to Friday and really has to work and focus. Um, so I've got the kids and I'm doing the homeschooling with them. The teachers are amazing. They provided everything for us, but I do have to sit there the whole day and the kids have my um, iPad and my computer to do their homeschooling. So I'm a bit techno technologically disadvantaged for the day, I guess. Um, so I am busy with the kids Monday to Friday and I am in my office Saturday and Sunday while my husband has the kids. And it's going really well so far, but it does feel weird because I do try and do all my filming now on the weekend. <laughs> so I feel like I only chat to you guys on the weekend. Okay, so I've just stuck some strips on. I went for different widths in between. I'm going to give my desk a quick little wipe with my finger. Right, and then we're just going to take a pair of long scissors. I like my Tim Holtz ones because they are titanium coated, I believe. So they're a non-stick scissor. Um, and all I'm going to do is just trim off the excess. Can't get any easier than this. I'm telling you, it's so quick. You can bosh out a whole bunch of cards really fast and you can use up all the scraps, especially if you've got beautiful papers that you've got from a paper pad. Um, if they're really like nice and light, and not overly patterned. Okay, so we're going to bring in our stamp platform again. And we're going to open it up. Everything should be exactly where we left it because we've not altered or moved anything. We're going to stick this right back where it was. We're going to line it up with our edges, pop it in, put our magnets on top. Then we're going to ink up 
our stamp. Now one of the nice things with this trick is if you've got your layers on, um, like my cardstock's a, quite a bit thicker than normal cardstock, if you've got normal paper it works as well. If you've gone and accidentally shifted your card slightly, so it's not exactly where it was, maybe just the teensiest bit out, you shouldn't notice a difference when we do this stamping because when you push down, as long as you're not trying to rock your platform at all, you should only be stamping that first layer because your cardstock is a bit lower down, so your ink and your stamp are only gonna touch the raised areas, if that makes sense. So if you get it a little bit off, you shouldn't notice it too much, which is a really nice trick with this. So we're gonna go and position it right back where it was. Using your sleeve is a really nice trick to getting a nice even pressure on your image. Um, Jennifer McGuire uses a chalkboard eraser or whiteboard eraser um, and rubs that. I just use my sleeve. So I like to do this two or three times depending on how much gold I've got on my image because the gold can sometimes absorb that black ink and so I want to just kind of stamp it down again. If you are using just normal cardstock or patterned paper then you will probably get a good image the first time around. But how gorgeous is that we've got our completed image and it takes seconds. The only thing, the longest thing it takes is to let that black ink dry for a little bit. The rest of the card is so quick and so simple to put together and it's so effective when you're done. Let me share with you my samples. Okay, so these are the samples that I created in my last video where I took my stamp platform, stamped my card, then I stamped the platform, lined up my strips on the platform, stamp the strips and then glued them on. <laughs> so you can see what I mean, I did it really, really backwards. So this is a massive time saver to stamp your image, put the strips on, stamp it again, done. But these are the ones I made last time. I've left them all as is because I thought they were just gorgeous. I can then come in, I can stamp a sentiment in the middle if I want, like happy birthday, or I can just leave them blank and give them to someone and they can be a birthday, they can be a thank you, they can be a happy note, whatever we want it to be. I just thought they were stunning and I wanted to leave them as is. Um, all these stamps, by the way, most of them are the woodware stamps. Um, I have been purchasing quite a few of these. I really, really like them. They're a nice big size and a really good price point. I think I only paid between three and five pounds for every stamp and they take up most of a card front. So I'm really happy with them. I'll do my best to link all the supplies I've used today down below for you if you want to check them out. So first up, I've used a Crafter's Companion stamp set on this one. Um, this birthday die is from Alina's shop on AliExpress and a happy from my stash. And I put the happy on um, with a few layers. I've la layered up my birthday as well and added some shimmer to that happy and finished that card off. Next, I have this one. I layered up a thank you die from Alina's shop, added some gems on it. Um, and that just kind of finished off that card. Oh, I also put on some shimmer onto the thank you as well. Then for this card, um, it's the same image again, and I just used some coordinating little flat back sticky drops. I just stuck those on, and I love how that card ended up as well. Next, I had some fun with my favorite apple blossom stamp, which is this rose. I'll do my best to link it down below for you if it's still available. I stamped several cards with this one. It took me no time at all. This time I used plain colored strips that were from my little jar on my desk, my stamp jar. Um, added a strip of glitter on there, some gems, and a welcome to neighborhood little sentiment strip. So on these ones, I went through my jar and got all those white strips that I had just lying around and stuck a few onto my card and stamped over it. And I love that kind of effect. You get this kind of texture, um, but it's almost like an optical illusion texture. And then on this one, I added on some strips of my homemade paper that I did the other day, or my homemade decorated background paper with some gems. And again, I just feel like they're really nice and simple and elegant. I love how they turned out. This one, I did the strips going across the card with a sentiment in the middle a few gems on the edge and that finishes that one off. Then you don't need to have strips if you've got scraps. You can take a hole punch and you can punch out a shape. If you've got your dies, you can die cut out shapes and you can stamp over top of them as well. So I did a nice little circle in the middle with some gems and I thought that would be a really good little simple, quick and easy uh, wedding card. 
lastly I did this one here which I loved I went with more cream colors and this is what I'm talking about if you've got pattern paper with a nice light kind of pattern on it it's perfect for this technique as well you can use those pattern papers up I've used a strip of gold on there I've got a bit of um cream pearlescent card which I stuck on there which you can see in real life it's really shiny and pretty and a couple gems or pearls I should say and another stamp uh, with love at the bottom and that finishes off that card. Next up I've gone with this geometric mandela which is from apple blossom as well. It's another great stamp that's a nice quite big one that can be a focal point of your card. I took one of my cards where I used the two different colors and then added a strip of my glitter card down the side and I just love how simple it is it adds like a little edge to it like it's a book almost and I just love this look and next I've gone for some diagonal strips again and some matching little flat back sticky back gems um, and it just went so quick finished off this card really nice and easy and lastly I have this card here which I added two of my flowers on from my last video that I made up added some extra strips in there um, stamped and embossed from me to you on this card and I just love it. I love how quick and easy these are. So I hope you had a really fun time with me tonight. I will be back again on Wednesday with another tutorial for you. And so I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Bye.